Welcome back. So even though the change tracker can solve our problem right here, there's an easy way to solve this issue by attaching using um, the NT Framework Core's own attached system. So let me try and show you guys another way of doing this. Again, we're working in a disconnected scenario in our case because we have objects that are right now not inside the DB context. So if you scroll down under ntframeworktutorial.net, if you scroll down to working with disconnected entity graphs over here, click it and you'll actually see so a great set of information right here about how we can work with this in the core 2, 1 and, and forward uh, in the newer versions. And if you look here, they have a great example on how they actually use a disconnected entity called student who has an address and he has a list of student courses that he kind of, uh, that he kind of works on right now. And then he has two courses. One is a new one and one is on, one that's already in the database. So this is a good example of pretty much everything you could be hit with when you're creating a new student. In our case, that's what we're going to do when we create a new order. So let's just scroll down. He pretty much goes in and wants, runs this single command right here. He attaches the student, like we're going to attach an order, and then right after he attached it, he set a state for that student, right? And he sets it to added in this case, because this guy is going to be added to the database. And automatically behind the scenes, the other states is going to be set. Now let's have a look at each state that it's going to set and then next lesson we'll try and do the same thing in our system. So let's have a look at how does it actually say, set the address state. And this guy is already in the database, just so that you know. So if we scroll down, you'll notice that the student itself is set to the state of added. So pretty much mean that the uppermost object, this guy is set to added, right? So that means that the student is a new student because he doesn't have a key, he doesn't have an ID. Next, he sets the student address, that's automatically set to unchanged, and that's because, notice right here, we have an address in here, so that's why it's not changed. Even though we put in properties here, they won't be changed, because it has an ID available. Okay, let's have a look at what happens with these student courses right here. The first course is being created. Let's have a look at that one. So the first student co course is being added. Why? Because it doesn't have an ID, right? The first course in that student course is going to have no ID, so that should also be added. And notice right here, the state of that is also added. And the second course is also going to be added because there's no, the student course is going to be added because there's no ID in there. But the second course right here is actually going to have an ID. So it pretty much means that if we look at a table, we're going to have relations right here. The student is going to have a relation to an already existing address, right? So that's the first one. It's an already existing address. So this is going to be a many-to-many -many relation, that's kind of why it looks so crazy, but a many-to-many -many relation saying that this guy is actually going to the first course that he's going to have a relation to is a new course called machine learning, and the second course he's going to have a relation to is a course already existing called uh, ID2. I don't know even know what it is, actually. But that's kind of how we can use this. So next lesson we're going to use the same attach and see if we can get our, our create and our update to work the same like they did right here. But I think this is a great one for just looking at the states you get when you set up these things. And also, if you kind of want to print the states, you can just copy this method right here and use it inside your system. So let's try and do this in the next lesson and get this up and running.